I'll say proudly that I have three wives. I've raised between them 25 children, and between those children, we now have 16 grandchildren. 17. I did the count, it's 17. <laughs> uh, that was with Maddie's. Yeah, two in the way. So, um, well, ladies and gentlemen, the normal channel is We Africa, whereby we examine issues in the, on the African continent mostly. We might sometimes examine situations that are outside our continent. We've got the freedom to do that. We are not restricted by anything. But today, I want us to look at the kings. Wives, kings were the three wives, all the 16 wives. Although I don't have a lot of information on the on wife number 16. Most of the wives, I do have some information on them. And the real reason why I don't have a lot of information on number wife number 16 is that this whole thing, this whole wife taking that he does, King Swati, is shrouded in secrecy. There are a lot of things that they try to hide from the people. The people know very little about how it takes the wife, uh, the, the initiation of the wife, and what, which is why when they are having umkanga, there is a moment in time when they close up everything from the cameras and from the prying eyes of the people. They do their own things. Uh, hidden from the cameras and from the eyes of uh, the common people, even their own people. Their own people don't know what exactly will transpire once the kitten you know, really comes down on the ceremony. They, what remains there is a secret that they don't even know. The secret that they still have to really un un unrangle and untangle. So I, what information I have here is not quite like everything. But I've tried to dig out as, as much as I can about the wives and I have uh, information all the, on the, all the 15 wives and I want us to look at that. Uh, against, the, against the backdrop of what you have been seeing here about polygamy, polygamy which is a situation whereby one husband is married to uh, two or more wives. And uh, some people think that is only widespread in Africa, as you would discover if you were to uh, do some research, it's widespread everywhere. Even in America, it's so common. It's only that the American government, the American system outlaws polygamy. So that's why most of it is done in secret. And many people who practice it don't even come out in the open. For those who come up in the open, usually the information sometimes is very limited. We don't get to know a lot. So today I want us to look at all the 15 wives of the world. Of the king and to see, have a documentary and profile how, where they come from, what kind of people they were. And uh, before we can make any judgments, I think I made you have a glimpse of what happens in the world about polygamy. Polygamy, uh, some of the religions even are based on polygamy. It's not only in Africa and it's not something barbaric and it's not something that bad. It's only a system that you might fail to understand or fail to appreciate, but the fact that you don't understand it or appreciate it, or maybe goes against what you think is right because of your cultural upbringing or because of the circumstances or situation where you are brought up, doesn't make it a very bad thing. So please, I want us to examine and look at this. And this is We Africa. Our channel is We Africa. If you haven't subscribed already, please, uh, could you please subscribe? And if you could, please share this with your friends because this is information well researched so for your benefit, for the benefit of everyone who is willing to take the information. Thank you so much. Let us have our narrative here, here again. Just to open up your mind, to provoke you into thinking, I'm just going to let you into what people think about uh, polygamy, what other people think about polygamy. Tonight, when one wife isn't enough. What was it like to hear your husband tell you that he was falling in love with your twin sister? Traditionally, a man has more than one wife. He has three or four wives. I don't have that feeling of shame if I talk about my dad having seven wives. How many wives do you have? I've got two wives. And is it important for a man in the community to have more than one wife? Important because of the honour, the honouring from the tribe, the clan that the man has done over the years through leading a ceremony and important things. So it's, it's an honour. So do you get more respect the more wives you have? More respect. So do you want more? In Islam it's allowed but with very strict conditions. I mean a man, to, 
to be able to do it, he, it's, it's a huge responsibility on him. He has to treat them both equally, has to spend time equally at both places, um, treat the children the same. His, his fortune needs to be split between, equally between the two. You mentioned polygamy to some people and there's instant disapproval. I wonder how you all feel about polygamy versus an affair or a mistress. Is it, is it, how, how do you view it? Yeah, Bianca. Polygamy is much better than an affair because it's, it's open, it's honest, whereas an affair is hidden. Um, if there is any sort of respect in any relationship, any form of trust, there has to be some form of honesty, and therefore um, polygamy is just, it's, it's just that much better. Um, everyone frowns, out, frowns upon polygamy and, you know, second wives and that, but, you know, um, mistresses do exist and it's very widespread and men are very likely to um, cheat on their wife. So, I, yeah, I would rather... Why do you say that? Why do you say that men are very likely but to cheat? But that's, that's how men were created. Um, they're weak and they... <laughs> <laughs> they're weak. They are weak. <laughs> Most men. Wow. Yeah, if not all. And why, why, if not all, why are you saying that? Are you saying that from personal experience? No, I'm just saying um, maybe that's why also one of the reasons why Islam permits a man to have multiple wives. No, I just like well, also, uh, uh, it's a psychological thing as well. Men can handle four women, but women cannot handle four oh, men. Are you, are you in a polygamous no. marriage? Would you be in a polygamous marriage? If... Um, I was in love with my husband a lot and he was so good to me and, and he, he had, you know, very strong desires that I couldn't fulfill um, or I was sick and, you know, a man has desires, then maybe I would if the lady was good. But would be a second wife, maybe. <laughs> Why um, would that be different? Because it's easier. Like, you know, he didn't marry on me. I was like the second... Um, that's, that's so, right. so it's easier. So you, weren't, you wouldn't feel betrayed in I wouldn't feel betrayed. The first wife, the first ritual wife, ritual wife number one, Kosika Tilama Tsubula, uh, she earned a degree, remember, she earned a degree through UNISA. It's a degree in psychology because the argument here is that since she was going to be in charge of a lot of people, the king oversees a lot of people, she, had, she has had to have a degree in psychology so that she will know how to manage these people. When she's managing through people, personal management of, a di of different individuals who fall under the king's jurisdiction, it would be easy for her because she would have done, she had already done a degree in psychology through UNISA. She did it through UNISA. And then ritual number two, La Moza, uh, is the mother of four. I told you, I, I mentioned the fact that she was not supposed to have, under normal circumstances, this, both ritual number one, ritual wife number one and ritual wife number two are not supposed to have kids because they are supposed to dedicate their lives to protecting the king, to doing rituals that will protect the king because as we know the king is constantly under attack from different people. The king has a lot of enemies both the local and from outside, uh, internal and external. The king is under attack from a lot of enemies and remember in African societies they believe that the king Will be protect, will be attacked by witches and uh, people who practice different kinds of uh, dark, uh, dark magic. So they would need someone who did dedicate a life to this. And ritual wife number one and ritual wife number two were supposed to dedicate their lives to doing this uh, for the king. But uh, La Mota eventually got kids. Maybe the king got attracted to her so much that maybe they ended up sleeping together. Maybe. Under normal circumstances, maybe he was not even supposed to sleep with her. I don't know how that to work because if uh, she was not supposed to have kids, then that means the king was not even supposed to sleep with her. Maybe someone was maybe given the duty to sleep with her. Maybe the kids even belong to someone else. You know, things that happen under a chiefdom, like a kingdom like this one, some of them are so secretive you'll never get to know the truth. So she's the mother of two and is ritual wife number two and is selected by the king is councillors. She is the patron of St. Anne's School and has been an active public speaker and is UNDP Goodwill Ambassador. Then wife number three, whom we often refer to as wife number one or the king's favorite is Lambi Kiza or Svonelo Mgomezulu. The gospel singer, she's a gospel singer and she was born in 1969 and married the king in 1986. There's a one year difference or some months difference in their ages. 
in the ages between the king's first wife or his first the first wife that he chose and he himself the because the king was born in 1968 she she is his first choice she's founder of south african based lucy to charity organization she advocates for christianity health aids prevention and treatment poverty reduction maternal mortality reduction and a lot more a lot of other things she's an articulate unisa law graduate she is also a mother or a mother to Mswati's first daughter or his first child he, who is a popular singer the name the name of the daughter is Skaniso Kamina. i think a lot of people know she's very outspoken she's also intelligent she's also a rebel just like a mother and uh, this uh, Sibonelo is a has made herself a lot of enemies in the royal household. She, uh, some people suspected her of having poisoned the king. They think that she needs his uh, uh, ambitions to have a son because she has got a son and a daughter. Son be the king of Swaziland. Uh, to, uh, in some time in the future, she has such ambitions. That's what they think. So they think that he was she was trying to poison the king so that his son would be the king of Swaziland. Uh, although this she would refute very, very, very strongly. And she's also a law graduate. She graduated as a lawyer, just like her father. And uh, she's very articulate and she's very, very outspoken. And that's why she call, people call her rebel, the rebel wife. She's very, 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 very vindictive sometimes. So that people even fail to re try to address her and maybe attack her directly. That is very difficult to do because she knows how to defend herself when it comes to speaking. Because maybe because the father is a lawyer and she's also a lawyer. So you find that Swanilo La Mugomezulu is regarded as a rebel, maybe because she's, she just also doesn't care. And many people do regard women who are outspoken as rebels. And they don't have very good things to say about women who are outspoken there usually think that women are, are outspoken, uh, maybe bad women, you know, women should be very soft and malleable and should be told what to do and then do it. But Ngome Zulu is the opposite of that. Sponilo is the opposite of that. She's, the, the, the people say that she used to be a tomboy, preferring to play with boys than with girls and also pre preferring to play soccer, uh, selling a, a toys for the doors to, to, to swap them for, for, for soccer boots and soccer balls. Uh, that is what she was like. So you can see that she's, she doesn't quite conform with the things that people expect a lady to do in the society. Then we go on to la wife number four, Langa Ngaza, Carol Gamini. This is a Gamini. And a lot of people who attack the king and say that maybe he understand that his lineage or rather his family tree is not Gamini. And he was just grafted by his mother, by his mother's careful planning and strategic planning to become a king, attack him using this angle that you married Kao I mean, there's, I think there are two more Gamini that he married. And Gamini is supposed to be a cousin. And how could he marry Gamini when he himself is a Gamini? So they, they, when they attack him and call him uh, names, like uh, he, many other names that he is given, other names that is given that I normally forget. <laughs> <laughs> they, they call him that because they believe that he is not uh, the true heir to the crown or to, to, true heir to the throne. And he was just grafted by his mother's strategic and uh, maybe uh, outmaneuvering the, 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 the regent who was there, who was maybe even chased away. The regent who was there, we are told she was chased away. She, uh, from, uh, from Swaziland at that time, when the time when he was enthroned. She is a law graduate and is a patron for Swaziland Hospice. She does awareness campaigns and in and uh, she was among those involved in the 2012 scandal in which they had planned a multi-million rand shopping trip to Vegas. She really educated her people on health, education, and the need for caring for others. So she's quite controversial also, just like uh, some of the king's wives. Then wife number five was Inkosinati Lawala. She ran away from royal life, leaving behind three children. She is still married to King Swati. She used the South African passport to evade security. She is, she, she is tired. She was tired of the royal kind of life because the royal life uh, style it can be very boring for some people because you have a husband who has got 15 other wives. And if you want a husband who is always there, like we know most women like a husband who is always available. 
you find that you can't have your husband when you want to have him. And that is quite difficult. No woman would dream of a marriage, a marriage like that where you, you, your husband is constantly with other people. She's and struggling uh, at the moment with her feelings about being in a polygamous marriage. Let's have a look. Well, the best thing about polygamous marriage is, like, everyone's happy, you get what you want. Like, he spends time with you, spends time with her. He... He buys her flowers, buys me flowers, like it's just, it should be legal because it's something beautiful. Like if you actually look into it and see how they're living and you would love it, like I reckon it should be legal. The biggest challenge was seeing another, him having another child from her. That was probably one of my biggest challenges. How am I coping? Um... Sometimes I, I'm all right, sometimes I'm upset, like it's just mixed emotions, yeah, just, it's depressing. I feel jealous, I feel upset, of course. Um, you just get really like rage. I'm always getting depressed about it. Just Sometimes I feel like I can't handle it anymore and just, I get all these thoughts like, you know, what to do, what am I going to do about and I think about my kids, I don't want them seeing me upset and depressed, so I try to be as, like, making myself as happy as possible just for my kids' sake. But the relationship is like, it's well, like, it's well but me, typically, I just don't want to be involved. Where to next? Um, move out, um, live my life, and see how it goes from there. When it comes to you, it comes only once, maybe a month, and maybe uh, you, you are not like, literally, you are not like somebody who is actually married. You are uh, like somebody who is maybe, <laughs> I don't know, who is having a boyfriend who comes to her whenever he has the chance to do that. You, you look like you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are a girlfriend or a concubine or a mistress whose chance to have a husband is only stolen when the wife when her husband dodges from his wife. So she ran away to South Africa and she had a South African passport and that's the passport that she used to run away to South Africa. And now she is in South Africa. Then wife number six is called Delisa Magwaza. Uh, she was married to the king in 1993. She was accused of having an affair uh, with the South African guy called Lizo Shabangu. The affair was cut when the guy expressed his desire to marry her. She had to cut the affair because the guy had really shown that he wanted to marry her. She devised a plan to run away and managed and is now living a lavishly married life in South Africa, married to a South African tycoon. She's uh, married to somebody who is very rich and is now South African. And, but legally, she is still married to the king. So this is... Um, one of the king's wives who ran away. I think, I believe there are three of them who managed to run away from him. And then wife number seven, who is St. Jane Masango, the high school dropout. She didn't even finish high school, this one. And when uh, the king married her, there was a furore, there was an outcry. She had been expelled from two different schools due to indiscipline and truants. When she got married to the king Swat in the year 2000, she enjoyed painting and hosting auctions of her paintwork to fund raise for her charities. She, become, she became very reclusive in the end because many people despised her and they thought that the king should not have chosen her for her wife. And eventually, she ended up committing suicide. She, she, she ended up committing suicide because life became very difficult for her because people were saying a lot of bad things about her and I think she's the one who has refused the who has refused the, 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 the who has refused the permission to go and mourn her sister. Her sister died and she was refused permission to go and mourn her by the king. The king being very maybe controlling did not allow her to go and mourn her own sister. I don't know why she he, could, he would do such a thing, but that's actually what happened. Then we are uh, on wife number eight, Lagija and Angela Jamin. This is another Jamin again. He married another Jamin, a second Jamin. They call her the runaway spouse. This one also ran away, just like the other wife. Married in 2002, she is the king's eighth wife and the third to run away. 
oh, they are saying they are, she's the third to run away. Yeah, maybe I have a minute. I've, I've not come to the the other one. She, according to my list here, she's the second to run away. From royal luxuries. You know, the royalty has got a lot of luxuries. For you to run away, surely you, you, you would have um, considered a lot of things, a lot of, uh, you would have been ex exposed or exerted to a lot of suffering, a lot of emotional pain, a lot of spiritual pain and a lot of intellectual uh, tortures so that you discover that life is no longer as interesting as it should be. So eventually she decided to run away because she had complained of many years of emotional and physical abuse under her husband. Her husband being the king Swati three, the king of Swaziland, Marco Sitibe. Then uh, wife number nine, La Magongo. Nonsense, La Magongo. The favorite. This one is the favorite. She says she's very, she was very athletic at school. Very, very athletic. Very, very agile. Very, very... Someone who is a disciplinarian. They say she is a strict disciplinarian. In 2004, she acknowledged that AIDS might enter the royal family, but insisted she would stay because she trusted God and her husband. She so she, she I, I, there's no uh there's this is the reason why I think the king really made her one of her favorite because she she had committed and uh, really sacrificed herself to him is a marriage to the king because she was admitting that even if AIDS in 2004 AIDS was still very serious it wasn't like in nowadays way it is controllable she declared that she would never leave the, the royal house even if AIDS entered the royal family she would stay because she trusted God and she also trusted her husband this is one very, very loyal wife. Wife number 10 is Zena Soraya Mahang, the one that couldn't get away. This one tried to get away because she did not want to be married to the king. She was married in 2002 and uh, she is very well known for having been abducted by the king to become the king's wife, number 10. She disappeared from her school in October of 2002, after intense investigations, her mother, Lynn Dewey, her mean Lynn, that she was taken by two men and was being sheltered at the royal palace. She reported the case to the police on 10 October, but this, the police did nothing and never, give a, never gave a feedback. Two men came to her and told her that her daughter was at the royal palace where she was assigned some royal duties. It then became apparent that the king had violated internationally recognized human rights for a woman and girls, including a right not to be forced into a marriage. A mother continued to sue the royal court, but nothing happened. The mother just gave up knowing she was fighting a losing battle. By the time I realized Zena was not going to be released, I knew there was no point in asking her whether she loved him or not. It would not be fair i think all the girls when the king first selected them cannot know how they feel there's no choice here if the king likes you that's that yeah most of these girls don't have a choice when the king chose them whether you like it or not you become the king's wife then wife number 11 in kosikati lantenteza or ayanda antenteza who was married to the king in 2005. She was engaged in 2002, but was married in the traditional function in Luzidzini in 2005. She is patron of Cheshire Home, Swaziland. Uh, that's all we know about uh, number 11, in Kostikasi, Land and Teza. A wife number 12, Notando Dube. This one has a lot said about her because she's the one who was unfaithful to the king. A marriage life is quite tragic because she was placed under house arrest for the rest of her life because of an alleged affair she was having with a Swaziland's justice minister and Miso Mamba, who was consequently fired and incarcerated. When the police raided the exclusive Royal Villas Hotel, they found the justice minister hiding under Notando's bed. She was ordered to leave the Royal household and uh, banished from the from the royal household. I think I'm told that they, she was initially put under house arrest and then 
she became very restless because she wanted freedom. She didn't want to be closed in where nobody was coming there. Why the, the, the uh, man she was cheating with could not come to see her. her husband could not come to see her. So she paper sprayed one of the security guards. And then she was banished. She was chased away. And later on, she became ill with skin cancer. She went to a South African hospital where she was supposed to be cured of this skin cancer. And she died in one of the South African hospitals. Then we come to wife number 13, Pindile Kampule. She was born in 1990 and married in 2007. She caught the king's attention when she beat a very beautiful TV presenter and Miss Swaziland by capturing the king's attention at the red dance when she was only 16. She's the one who made him swat violate his own decree not to allow any man to marry anyone below the age of 18. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. One rule for the king and one rule for everyone else. He was fined a cow which he never paid. So the situation is that the king had realized that there was so much AIDS, there was so widespread, so he gave in a decree that no one should marry a woman of a lady of less than 18 years for about in the next five years. I think this decree was given in 2002. But within three months, he then took this lady, took this young lady who was only 16 as a wife, violating his own decree, showing that he is not a man of principle, he is not a man of his word. He is just a, a man who is just loose, who doesn't have any principles at all. He violated that decree despite the fact that it was important to try and encourage others not to take or marry kids who were under 18. He took her and he was fined a cow, but because he's the king, he never paid that cow. Wife number 14, who is in this work, I mean, this is another Gamini that he married again. He was born in 1995 and married in 2013. She was bare-breasted when the king chose her, and she was adorned in traditional attire. Bare-breasted, which means that she didn't have any breast at all when the king chose this young lady. She was a Miss Cultural Heritage finalist and had just graduated from St. Francis High School. There is such intense censorship when it comes to issues of the king's wife that the king's subject know very little about these wives. What happened to a bare-breasted lady to make her mature into a wife? We don't know because most of the rituals that happen for the king, when the king is taking the wife, a lot of people, even the Swaz people themselves, they are shut out of this situation. When the curtain comes down the, and closes the, the most of the events of the day, to only a few, uh, he, he, no one is really late. They, they don't know what will happen after that. Uh, the rituals that they will be doing there that are hidden from the people, some of them which are very dirty and dark, they don't know them because they are hidden also because the cameras are taken away because they know these things are dark. They know that people really would not respect the kingdom or the King, king, if they see what he is doing in their, in their kingdom. And wife number fifteen is Sepelele Mashwama. She was married in 2019. She's the daughter of a senator. She graduated from the Elite Waterford Kamkamba High School and went for university at Rochester University in USA. And while she was there, her parents terminated their studies so she could come and marry the king was voted the most eloquent speaker when she presented a paper on empathy during a conference at the university. Which means she had a lot of potential, but she had to quit school, she had to quit university and come back and marry. You know, being married to the king comes with a lot of respect, comes with a lot of honor, which is why the parents decided to terminate her studies there and bring her back so that she could be married to the king. That's uh, how she got married to the king. She had to terminate her studies there in America. All these women might have chosen a different path, but have just resigned themselves to their fate. Some really love their men more than you can imagine, but some suffer in silence because the feelings are mixed. They don't all feel the same when it comes to loving the king. Some don't even love the king. Some would rather have him die than survive as their husband. Some love him so much that they could even protect their, his life with their own. So the mixed feelings are mixed because there are a lot of them, 15 wives. But as you can see, some of the wives have ran away, some are dead, and maybe has replaced those who have ran away with some wives that you could just pick from the 
from the community or from Swaziland because there's a free hand in all this. So we don't know because there is so much secrecy, it's shrouded in so much secrecy. And a lot of the things that happen, we don't even know because they are hidden from the prying eye of the people, from the prying eye of the public. We don't know what actually happened. So these are the king's 15 wives, the 16th wife that he took. We don't even know a name, but he, we are told that he took wife number 16 last year, which is 2020. We don't even know a name, we don't even know an age, we, we, we will keep checking. We, we, we don't know these things because they are hidden from the people. Like, they know that these things are ugly, they know that these things are dead. Maybe this kid is still too young to be married. So they try to hide the fact that they are maybe having what we call statutory rape. The king is committing statutory rape by taking this young kid. So we know nothing, all the facts are hidden and people are left with nothing to hold on to in terms of information. But thank you so much for following me through the narrative that gives us the king's 15 wives. And this is the way it is with the king, so at his 15 wives. And uh, this is the harem that form. This is his harem, uh, which is giving him so many problems also because some of them are cheating, some of them are running away, some of them are committing suicide. It's never very easy to have 15 wives. I don't know how his father managed it. So Buzza too, how he managed with him. 125 wives. If he, his son is struggling with only 16, how did he manage to control or rule over 125 or 100 or 70 wives? I think that was so much difficult. Maybe it was easy because uh, at that time the tra tradition was still so deep, it was still so strong, and most of the women were st controlled by tradition. Nowadays, these women are getting a bit liberal. They are educated, they are open minded. Their kind of reasoning is different from the women of. Uh, uh, the 70s or of the women of the 60s, those women were quite submissive and malleable. Nowadays, women are very difficult to manage. They are very difficult to control because they can do their own thing. Most of these women are educated. Uh, they can just try to free themselves by running away to South Africa, marrying someone else or sleeping with someone else. I think they, they, whenever they get a chance to have a, some glimpse of freedom or if, so, so, some touch of freedom, I think they will try to reach out. Because I think they, are, they, they don't look happy if you look at their pictures. They don't look quite happy like they are. They don't look free, except for Lambikiza, Swanilo Gomezulu, who seems to be liberal, open-minded, and uh, who doesn't care about people. Uh, actually, she doesn't care about anyone. That one looks to be a bit freer than the rest. Thank you so much. Please subscribe uh, to the channel. Subscribe, please. Thank you so much. I don't have... <laughs> Come I don't on. have any feelings of jealousy because I think it was very gracious for my sister to let me share her this husband. When the king takes a wife at the red dance, uh, the wife will not become a wife. He will just The wife will just be a concubine until she conceives, until she has shown that she can conceive and have a baby or have babies. Only then is she permanently integrated into the royal family. Without getting pregnant, the wife would eventually be dismissed. If she fails to conceive, if she fails to fall pregnant, then she will eventually be dismissed and she will never be the king's wife. So she will remain a concubine until she falls pregnant.